All right, how do we write an absolute value inequality for a graph or for a word problem? Well, let's first look at a simple um, absolute value inequality. So let's say that I have the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 5. Let's go the, through the process of solving this. We write two inequalities, remember, x minus 3 is less than 5, x minus 3 is greater than negative 5. Remember that you flip the inequality sign on the second one and you make the number negative. And then this is a less than, so we put the word and in between. So when I solve this, then I get x is less than 8 and x is greater than negative 2. Well, let's look at the graph for that. All right, here's negative 2, here's 8, and because it's an and, I want to shade all the numbers that are less than 8, which are these, and all the numbers that are greater than negative 2, which are these. The numbers that work for both are right here in the middle. So my graph would be shaded in between negative 2 and 8. All right, well, let's look at this graph for just a second and compare it to this statement. The middle number for this graph can be found by taking an average. Remember that the middle of something is an average, so you simply add the two numbers, 8 and negative 2. Those are my two numbers on the end, and you divide by 2. Well, 8 minus 2 is 6. 6 over 2 is 3. So my middle number here is 3. Well, notice where 3 sits in my inequality statement, all right? Well, then, look at the difference between 3 and 8. How far is it from the middle to either end, 3 and 8 or 3 and negative 2? How far is that? Well, it's 5 units. So you'll notice that the distance from the middle to either end is right here in my inequality statement, all right? The distance from the middle, which is 3, to either end is 5. So in an absolute value inequality, we notice that we're going to have the absolute value of x minus, and then we're going to have the middle number. We're going to have an inequality sign or an equal sign, and then we're going to have the number that represents the distance from the middle to either end. That's the pattern for writing an absolute value inequality. So let's suppose that my graph looks like this. Let's suppose that I have a graph that is shaded on either end. All right, and we'll just say that these two numbers, now let's make this a little bit challenging. These two numbers, let's say this is negative 10 and this is negative 2. What would the absolute value inequality statement for this graph look like? All right, well, let's start with our pattern. Absolute value of x minus. Now I'm looking for the middle number. Remember the middle number is an average, so I'm going to add these two numbers negative 10 and negative 2, and I'm going to divide by 2. Well, negative 10 plus negative 2 is negative 12, over 2 is negative 6. So negative 6 is my middle number. So x minus negative 6, because that's my middle number, that's going to be in my absolute value signs. Now I need to pick an inequality sign. This is an inequality. Well, this is how an OR graph looks, an absolute value or graph is shaded on both ends. So I'm going to pick the greater than inequality. Now this is, we'll just go ahead and say greater than or equal to. We'll use our closed end circles there so that we can say greater than or equal to. Now I need the distance from the middle number to either end. All right, well the distance from negative 6 to negative 10 is 4 units. The distance from negative 6 to negative 2 is 4 units. They need to be the same. That's why it's the middle number. So 4 is the distance. Remember, a distance is never negative. It's always positive. So that's my distance 
to either end. Now all I'd want to do here is clean this up to make it look a little bit better, like we really intend to be done here. You see? Don't need double negative signs. So the abs this graph would be the absolute value of x plus 6 is greater than or equal to 4. All right, so let's consider a real-life situation that would be an absolute value inequality. Let's suppose that I told you that I weigh 120 pounds plus or minus 3 pounds. That's an absolute value inequality statement. Let's look at the graph for that. All right. Well, my weight is 120, but I could weigh as much as 123, or I could weigh as little as 117. If I graph what my weight tends to be, it's going to be between 117 and 123. If I write that as a compound inequality, then that graph would look like x is greater than closing my circles here, greater than or equal to 117, and x is less than or equal to 123. That's the way I would write it as a compound inequality. But to write it as an absolute value inequality, which is the way it's given, it's given as an absolute value inequality. Well, then I would write x minus, and my middle number, notice, is 120. It's an AND graph, so I would say less than or equal to. And then the distance from either end to the middle is 3. So I would put my 3 right here. You see, those are the numbers. The 120 and the 3 are the numbers given in the situation. Therefore, it reads like an absolute value inequality rather than a compound inequality.